well and I hope you're looking forward to coming back to school. Now imagine that since last March we've been on a long journey out of COVID-19 and into a time when it's not something that we have to worry about on a daily basis. And it's also hopefully to a time when we can spend much more time together. You can spend time with fam family and friends and you can do things like going to the cinema without really having to worry about it. Now, this is a journey that has had many diversions with the releasing of restrictions followed by smaller and then tougher lockdowns. And on almost any journey, there comes a time when someone will ask, are we nearly there yet? Now, as a veteran of a member of staff on school trips, um, I've learnt to my cost that there is no good answer to that question. Because journeys like the one that we're on rarely have a definite end time. You rarely know while you're on that journey when it will end because there could be traffic jams, there could be, as we've been on, diversions, or even occasionally the odd breakdown. And so I also advise those who ask that question, try not to worry. You are heading in the right direction. Whether you are aiming towards your GCSEs or A-levels or simply just want to get to the end of the academic year, having learned as much as you possibly can, just don't worry, we will arrive. And the journey is going to be even better if we work together to get there. Now, you can already feel incredibly proud of yourself because if we look back in the mirror, you can see how much you have already done to get towards our destination. You've coped incredibly well with remote learning. I've seen you participating in remote activities from the PE lessons and the um, Hyde Cup through to the head girl team breakfasts, the school council, through the uh, um, activities that happened with some of the clubs. You've been there and you've tried and you've participated and you've learnt. And actually, even since last September, you've adapted incredibly well to the things that we've had to do. You've adapted to the adaptations. And along the way, while looking after yourself, you've also looked after others. And I've heard and seen constant acts of kindness from the huge acts of kindness where girls have shared work with each other, noted, uh, let each other know when deadlines are glooming, through to small acts of kindness, such as the simple thank you at the end of a lesson. There is nothing like making others feel good about yourself and themselves to make the journey feel easier. Now, we're not there yet, and we do need to consider how we reduce the spread of the coronavirus. And we're increasingly aware of how important it is to stop the spread through the movement of the virus through the air. And therefore, we're going to be making the adaptations, the changes in school, a little bit um, different and keeping many of the things that we've already been doing. For example, the familiar part of the journey will be the fact that when you come back next week, on whatever day it is, we will still will maintain the zones. This is an important part of being able to limit the number of students we may have to send home for self-isolation by keeping you within your zones. The adapted school day, in other words, that in which we've staggered the starts or the breaks or the ends today will continue. So the timetable of the school day that you left with back in December will be the same now. I know for the last half term, we've all been following the same timetable, but we have to go back to the old way of doing it. So we're back to the 
staggered starts and ends of the day. Now, you will be expected to be back in uniform. Unfortunately, you're going to have to get out of those, you know, those leggings or jogging pants or those um, T-shirts that you're getting used to wearing. You're back in uniform. Any hair colour that you've been uh, enjoying over the last half term goes back to being your normal hair colour. Any piercings you've had put in will need to be taken out. You have to dust out your uh, blazer and put that on. Uniform will stay the same. And we will continue to make sure that we're not passing materials between the um, adults and the, uh, you as much as possible by using Teams. And staff will continue to post resources on Teams for you. Now, some things are going to change. For example, face coverings. Now, I have updated the policy and that's on the website. So if you want to look at more details about this, do look at that. You do need to remember that the, one of the most important things about wearing these face coverings is that you wear them and you store them carefully. This is one I used this morning, but I won't be wearing it this afternoon because I've been wearing it then for more than four hours. You do need to make sure you bring a couple in at least, so then you are able to chair them if they become uh, dirty or they become soiled because you've been wearing them all day. Now, this also will be reviewed at Easter so that um, if there are changes to the government guidelines, we may change this again. But for when you return, your face coverings must be worn in all areas inside a building where you cannot maintain a distance of more than two metres from one other person. Now, in reality, what that means is, is that when you come into a building, you need to put your face covering on and you need to keep it on probably throughout all of your lessons and if you're in the sixth form while you're in your study areas your private study areas now there are exceptions to this for example if you're participating in exercise or strenuous activity that's most likely to be for example a p lesson when you're inside now if you're also seated in order to be able to eat or drink so if you're inside during a break or during lunchtime and you're eating or you're drinking you may remove your face covering but you need to need to be sitting down to be able to do this. So you can't be wandering around the corridors or in the classroom eating or drinking to remove your face mask. If a member of staff asks you to remove your face covering, you must do so. That's probably because if you're having a conversation in which you need to be heard and you can't be heard through your face covering, then it may be at that time you need to remove it. It's also if you have been given an exemption. So um, your parents can apply for you to have an exemption and you can um, see on the website in the policy of how to do that. Now, wearing the face masks, um, your face coverings and keeping the windows open and the doors open are to allow for ventilation. This will mean it reduces and disperses any of the virus that might be in that room out of the room. I will still allow you, if it is cold, for you to wear a coat, but a coat is not a replacement for either your blazer or your school jumper. So I will expect you to be wearing your blazer and your school jumper and your blazer. If you still are cold, you can still wear a coat on top of that for the moment. And again, that's a coat, not a hooded top. Now, because we know we need to keep um, particularly the older age groups as distance as possible. In year 12, we're going to relax our attendance expectations just until Easter. So therefore, you can arrive before your first lesson. You can leave after your last lesson of the day and you will only need to attend one registration a week. And you will be uh, talking to your form tutor about which of these registrations it will be. In the sixth form, in year 12 and year 13, when you're not in lessons and if you're still in school, you must do everything you can to maintain social distancing from each other. I will not expect to see you sitting next to people if there is space for you to do so elsewhere. This is for your sake to make sure that you can remain in school for as many days as possible before the end of the year or when, you're, uh, when the um, assessments begin.
Now, mass testing. The reason why we're doing mass testing is to identify any girl or adult who has coronavirus but hasn't had the symptoms. It has been the case in the, the last term that due to no fault of her own, a girl had tested positive, but she hadn't been ill. She hadn't shown any of the symptoms. And because of that, she'd been in school for three days and all the girls that she had been in at least two metre distance to, in other words, her close contacts, all had to self-isolate. And that was over 50 girls. So by participating in the mass testing programme, it means that if a girl is asymptomatic, she does have coronavirus, then she won't come into school and all those other students and staff won't have to self-isolate. We are going to do this twice weekly. So on your first test, you don't have to wear a uniform, but you will need to bring in your lanyard with your ID badge on because it's really difficult to hear through your face covering. Therefore, by showing your, your lanyard and your ID, the member of staff who's registering you won't have to, you know, won't find it difficult to hear your name. And while you're here, you need to keep socially distanced because if anyone who tested positive, any girl that she was within two metres will have to self-isolate and you won't be able to come back to school and for another 10 days. You'll have two more tests while you're at school and then all students will be issued with a twice weekly home kit. But you don't want to hear it from me. You're going to hear this now from the head girl team. everyone welcome back we're so excited to have you back in school and have lessons up and running and we hope you feel the same and are getting prepared to um, being back in live lessons in person um, so we as the head girl team want to quickly run you through the process of testing and getting back to school so we can have things as efficient as possible for both teachers and students because testing especially now we're doing it two times a week is going to be so important of us and it's really important that we do it in a safe and efficient manner so the head girl team will be running you through the whole process when you get outside the school building you wait on the arrows to make sure you social distance there'll be queue monitors around to make sure that you're social distancing and to tell you when to go inside Once you get to the start of the queue, you must make sure to keep your mask on. You'll be met by a lovely teacher. Hi, Mr. Browning. Hi, Boo. And you'll be asked to come over to the Perspex class. Please make sure that you have your lanyard to identify you with your mask on. Hi, Mr. Browning. Good morning, Boo. So, I'm going to give you a card. I'm going to put the barcode on it here. I'm going to scan that. I'm going to write your initials on the card and on the barcodes. And I'm going to give you that at a swap. I'm going to ask you to do two things. Have you already sanitised your hands? Yes. And I'm also going to check with you that you don't have any COVID symptoms. Do you yes. have any symptoms? I have no symptoms. That's good. So you're going to take all of those things and you're going to follow. Then, taking the barcode sticker that you have been given, Put that between a screen and your assistant will sort that out for you. Then take the hand sanitizer on your table and clean your hands thoroughly. Make sure to clean both sides and between your nails. Before taking the test, make sure to take off your face mask and put this in a pocket or on your person, ideally not on a table to avoid contamination. Then take the test kit and peel it apart like a plaster or a sticker, pulling it out by the plastic and not touching the cotton swab. Then rub the swab on each tonsil or tonsil area at least three times and for at least 10 seconds using an up and down movement. Then insert the swab into your nostril about 2.5 centimetres when you will feel a slight resistance. Rotate the swab five times maintaining good contact with the inside of the nostril. This should be for 10 to 15 seconds. The test assistant will be there to guide you through the whole process. After that's done put the swab into a plastic tube on the side avoiding touching the sides of the tube as much as possible. After that, make sure to put your mask back on 
and then remember to collect the record of your test. On your desk are some wipes, so use them afterwards to clean your shelf, mirror and desk provided to make sure there is no cross-contamination or germs left behind. Don't forget to hand sanitise before you finish and then you can leave the building using our one-way system going out the exit guided by the arrows on the boards and screens. Remember, if you have any questions, there are staff there to help, as well as arrows and posters across the school building. As you may remember, before um, taking the test, Boo picked up a registration card. You can now, we will now walk you through the process of using this card to register your COVID test. There are um, instructions all across the school on um, cards that can help you if you have any difficulty with this. The registration is really simple and there will be staff and signs ready to help you if need be, but they will ask you a series of questions such as your postcode, your ethnicity and your age. Now the site is asking me for my test site ID. Oh no, I've forgotten what it is. WKTI, otherwise known as Watford Koalas Take Insulin. Thank you. <laughs> About half an hour after your test, you should get a text from the NHS saying whether your test was positive or negative. Mine was negative, so I can go about my day. It's still important to social distance, even if you get a negative test. It results show that transmission is mostly aerosol, so we must make sure that we still social distance regardless of our test results. No, I was negative! No! Stay away! Respectfully. Social distance, guys. So on Monday the 8th, when you come in for your test, this is just to get a test. And as soon as you finish doing that, you should go home. And as hard as it is, try to social distance away from your friends, just to stay extremely safe. To summarise, there are five key points that you need to remember. One, make sure you register your COVID test so that you can receive your results. Two, remain socially distanced at all times, even if you receive a negative test and even if they're your best friends, they don't have an exception to COVID. Number three, wear your masks. Unless you're outside like I am right now, you need to be wearing your masks at all times so that you keep safe. Number four, remember your lanyards. This is going to make it so much easier for teachers to sign you into your COVID tests. So please remember to bring them in. I'm wearing mine right now. And number five, sanitize. Sanitize before you do your tests and straight after as well because we don't need you spreading any germs. Um, as, and honestly, I can tell you hands down, the test isn't that hard. It may be uncomfortable the first time you do it. I mean, we're not used to sticking swabs up our noses or down our throats, but it does get easier. Um, we really look forward to seeing you guys, even if things are gonna get a bit different, but they should be getting better soon, just as long as we all stick to the rules that the school has. Bye. Thank you girls, that's fantastic. Now, we must protect each other. And as in everywhere else that's happening in the United Kingdom, these three words are the most important. You keep washing your hands more frequently than you would normally do. You wear your face covering and you keep that social distance as much as you possibly can. And Finally, the Head Girl team will be launching their Culture Month, their theme of this year during this time. And the Head Girl team are going to be sending an assembly all about this to you, and that's going to be coming out soon. I cannot tell you how excited I am about having you all back in school. These corridors, this school has been too quiet without you. We really missed you. Now, I don't know how long this journey out of COVID will be. If you're in year 11 or year 13, I think there's one more diversion coming in your way and I'm going to be sending you a separate film all about that tomorrow. Now, 
we will reach our destination. We will arrive out of COVID, but it's going to be a better journey to get there if we all work together. And I know you can, and I know we will. Take care, and I'll start seeing you all next week.